Um, Y'all know why we're here. Uh, last night, uh, shortly after one o'clock, probably, uh, I, I can't even begin to talk about how bad this is. Um, shortly after one o'clock, the law enforcement community here in the, in the Metro Des Moines area lost two officers. Uh, it started about uh, 1.05 in the morning in Urbandale. Officers responded to uh, reports of shots being fired in that area. The first officers to arrive on the scene found a police officer no police officer still seated in his vehicle and he'd been shot and killed. About 20 minutes after that, uh, officers were in the area attempting to help the Urbanville officers figure out what had happened, see if we could identify a suspect. Um, one of uh, our Des Moines officers found a Des Moines police officer seated in his vehicle at an intersection. He'd also been shot. He was transported to um, Methodist Hospital where he died shortly after. Um, right now, we're developing suspect information. We really don't have anything that we can share with you right now on that. We'll get that out as soon as we can because we think uh, it, you'll probably play a critical role in uh, helping us track somebody down. Um, we'll get the names of the officers out um, in due time. We're still making the appropriate notifications both within our building and within their families. So it's going to be a little bit before we get all that out. A couple uh, just short things to note that we'd like you to share with the community at this point right now. Uh, Merle Hay Road from about roughly Urbandale to Hickman Road is going to be closed indefinitely while we work the scene. On our end, Urbandale's got a similar situation as 70th and Aurora. There are going to be some traffic delays over there. Uh, I don't think we've determined yet if that's going to impact school at this point. Not, 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 not this time. We haven't determined if that's going to impact school at, um, at Urbandale High School. but. Those are a couple of key things we think the community needs to know about as they try and move around during the day to day is that uh, those areas are pretty much locked down. Uh, we'll, we'll get them open when we can. Outside of that, um, I guess we'll open it up for whatever questions you have. Those, those are the details that we can share about what's going on. Paul, we're all yes, sir. deeply, deeply sorry. Thanks, Dan. Uh, you mentioned in your press release that it appears to be ambush style attacks. Is there any more you can say about that? Uh, in all appearances, it looks just like that, that these officers were ambushed. It, um, on the surface right now, just like I said, we're just a few hours into this, it doesn't look like there was any interaction between these officers and, and whoever the coward is that shot them while they sat in their cars. Um, that's the best we got that we can explain the scene right now. Uh, both of them were in their cars. Do we have a suspect? Do we have any indication? No. We're, we're developing some suspect information. There's nothing right now that we can't share or that we're at the point to share. Um, it, trust me, as soon as we got something we can put out, it's coming out. Paul, this has been a hellish year. How do you, how does the department prepare each shift to continue to answer finally more and keep going out? third loss this year. It's, I don't even know where to begin on how bad this year is. And uh, you know, on Urbandale, Sheridan, our loss in March. I, this is what we do. I mean, we come in day in, day out, and we go out there and we provide the same level of service, regardless of what's going on in our personal or professional lives. Uh, we understand that the community has expectations of us, and that's part of the service that we provide. Um, you're not going to see any difference um, in the service that we're providing and the, the, the way we do it. Uh, the best thing I can say about that is you just got to look at the people who work here. And if anybody's paid attention since March, if not paid attention before that, you know that you got the best police department in the nation right here. Um, we know that we've got the best community. We saw that after Carlos and Susan were killed. And I, I certainly expect that we're going to see the same thing coming. Um, many thanks in advance for that. But uh, yeah, it, I, I really don't know how to, I hope that answers your question, Dan. I mean, this is just what we do. This is who we are. Um, we're going to be here tomorrow. We're going to be here tonight. Was there any type of radio traffic between the officer and dispatch at all? No. What led you then to find him? Our officer? Yeah. We had obviously gone to help the Urbandale officer with their situation. We had saturated the area. There were several agencies. Every agency that's 
represented in central the metro here was there. Um, officers just saturated the area, one of them saw the police car sitting there, pulled up down. Is there any indication of how many shots I, were fired? I have no idea. So, um, the Des Moines officer, were they not, were they just regular patrol when this happened, or were they also responding to the shots fired while yeah. the RBW? Our resources are, yeah, he was going over to help. Everybody in that area was trying to help. Um, it, yeah, keep in mind, we're talking three miles, and, or about three miles and 20 minutes or a little less. You know, this was still a fresh scene in Irvingdale. Um, obviously, the worst thing that we could expect to respond to, so we poured everything we had available into helping them. Sergeant Underwood. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Uh, do you have any perspective on how long it's been since you lost an officer in the line of duty for shooting? I don't, and to my knowledge, I don't think that we ever have. Uh, and how large is your department currently? Just over 50 officers. Um, to clarify, no other officers were hurt. No. Or no one else was hurt. No. Um, and do you uh, think that there is possibly one suspect or possibly one suspect? We have no idea. Suspect? That, that's that's what we're working with right now. We've got obviously we called in all our detectives. Uh, we're being helped at the Irvingdale scene with, by DCI. They've offered their resources to help us out also. So everybody that can be on this is on it. Is there any concern that there's still potential danger in terms of? Attack? There's clearly a danger if you're a police officer. These guys were gunned down, sitting in their car, doing nothing wrong. So there's definitely some danger out there. There's somebody out there shooting police officers. We hope we find him before anybody else gets hurt. We definitely don't want anybody in the public to get, or in the community to get hurt. But there is a clear and present danger to police officers right now. And we've doubled up our officers. I think Urbandale's taken some of those same precautions. But yeah, there's there's definitely danger out there right now. Um, as far as you, you don't have officers in like a one-man car, you have people together. We've paired our officers up right now. Again, I apologize if you've already addressed this. What can you tell me about this? We can't tell you anything about it right now. We're still uh, working through getting everybody that needs to be notified. Do you know if, um, I, should, I would assume, they had dash cameras maybe had body cameras in the case of Irvingdale? Would those have been on? Uh, that's going to be part of the evidence gathering. I, I, I don't know that. Um, I know that we, we will go to the cars and retrieve whatever evidence we can out of them. And if that means you know evidence of the gunfire, whether it's bullets or shell casings or the video, or anything, it, it's all going to be wrapped up. Irvingdale does have body cameras. We do. Des Moines does not. Not yet. Those, those body cameras, as far as Irvingdale, do they run all the time? Or are they? They playing? do not. Um, I can't speculate at this point whether or not that was on. Uh, that would be part of the investigation that's conducted from here forward. It's our intention to uh, keep you guys up to date throughout the day. Um, we'll get something out as quick as we can here. I'm, I'm thinking probably around the 10 to 11 o'clock hour we'll, we'll gather again, um, and then probably again in the afternoon. Um, we'll both be visiting the scenes. I know you've got the staff out there. We'll speak to them at the scenes a little bit, but uh, let them know we don't have anything more than what we just told you right now. Our intention is to stay together today for the most part. So if you need anything, you reach out to one of us, you get both of us. We get the information out to you as quickly as we can. Thank you, sir. Are you taking any further precautions in order to protect each other for the next 24 hours? You know, I think specifically right now, like I said, we, we've doubled up our officers. I don't know if Riverdale's taking that step just yet or not. Um, but, you know, we, we're very well aware of, of the society that we're living in right now and the time and that there are some not so positive views of law enforcement that uh, there's a certain segment of our population that holds. So, I mean, we're as vigilant as we can be, you know, and still provide the, the service that we need to provide. Um, you know, if we've talked about this many, many times before, that if we we don't provide the service in the manner that we do uh, with the, the, I guess, the, the personal type of service that we do, we're nothing more than an occupying army. So, we're, 
we're going to do what we can to keep ourselves safe. Uh, we, we're always vigilant about our safety, but we still got to go out there and do it.